So the big question is that what happens if you actually, um, so maybe I'll, I'll take a step back. So when, my, when we showed you, when I showed you this graph here, we were talking about infection, but it, pretend that this is the same thing as your initial exposure is your first dose of vaccine, secondary exposure is your second dose of vaccine. And you would expect this primary response and after the first dose and a very high secondary immune response with a second. So this is what we would expect with a lot of our vaccine, not all of them, but the majority of them. The first dose, the, 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 the bang for your buck is in your first dose, but the second dose is that you, you, you wanna make very um, robust, high affinity antibodies, high uh, titers of neutralizing antibodies, but you, want, you also want that like longer sustained uh, level. So, um, this I would say, I kind of just doodled it myself. So it's not up to scale and it's not exactly accurate, but it's just to illustrate a bit of this concept. Um, so let's say you're here, you get your first dose. I kind of wrote ten, day, day 10 because it appears in a lot of the initial clinical trials, at least with the mRNA vaccine, that the placebo groups so the group that did not get any vaccine versus the group that got vaccinated kind of like, you know, separated around the 10 days. So we assume that you start to make antibodies around that time. And so you get this, you know, primary response. And then let's say, and again, I think that it wouldn't dip that low, but let's say you plateau a bit and then oh, you get your second dose of the vaccine uh, of your mRNA vaccine as per authorization, which is between 21 and 28 days. And then, wow, you get a nice secondary immune response with high titers of neutralizing antibodies. And then eventually, if you were to measure these antibodies over time, they would slowly wane, plateau, and, and, and eventually um, you know, be at fairly low levels. But what happens if you actually extended this second dose? Um, so instead of giving it here, you decide to give it at 112 days or 120 days. This is the four month uh, and you delay. So eventually what happens um, is that the antibody that are produced after the first vaccine dose would kind of like plateau and then go down. But it doesn't, you know, it's not necessarily zero and it's unlikely to be um, like a, a true zero, um, sometimes in, in, in even natural infection, when people measure their antibody levels, it does, they're undetectable. It's, it's probably not a true zero, but not enough for us to be able to detect in our, in our testing. But if you were to give the second dose here, the assumption is that you would still get the secondary immune response with, after the second dose, you would get high neutralizing um, antibody titers again, because this is your second exposure again. The only, so the, this, you know, from a from an immunological perspective, um, biologically, when people ask, do you think the first, you know, if I delay so much, it won't work, I think it'll still work fine in terms of if you get the second dose delay. The, the only caveat is that there are studies that show that if you do have high titers of neutralizing antibodies, that may help with preventing infection. Although again, another caveat is we actually don't know what is that level that you need. Is it is it three, is it six, is it nine, is it 10? We, we, we don't know. So the risk here is that in fact, if you do need a higher level of neutralizing antibodies to prevent an infection, then this is your risk of exposure. It's that time between the doses. So again, I don't think that, uh, you know, uh, again, based on clinical immunology, clinical vaccinology principles, that I don't think that delaying the second dose is gonna harm the effectiveness of the vaccine. I think you'll still get your secondary immune response. But, you know, if you had to compare both, right, like would I, uh, maybe it's, maybe both are fine in terms of the antibody titers, but in general, high levels of neutralizing antibodies are, are more effective at preventing infection. So you might be at risk within that period if you get a first dose and then you decide to not follow public health precautions and you get exposed to COVID-19, you might still be infected. But again, when you get infected, that infection will likely act as your secondary exposure to the antigen. And so you might have still a brisk uh, immune response. You may not have severe disease, but you might, you know, you'd still be infected. Again, I'm, I'm saying this, this is, you know, you may based on, on, on all of these principles. So there, you know, are the, there are no studies that have specifically uh, purposely designed it to be done this way. There are some real life effectiveness data on jurisdictions that have delayed the second dose and what happens. So that's just kind of principle. So I hope it, it kind of makes sense to you.